Hey, I'm Zuri Berry of Boston.com and the Boston Globe. Here with me is Boston Globe High School Sports Editor Bob Holmes. And we're going to hear talk about the Super Bowls. We're a few days out, but nonetheless, this is a good time to pick up and look back at the games, look back at the season, and also look ahead a little bit. Um, on Saturday, unfortunately, a competitive perspective, uh, there were a number of blowouts in sat on Super Saturday. Um, but also, unfortunately, there was a bit of controversy in the Division 4A game between Cathedral and Blue Hills. If you haven't heard already, Cathedral quarterback Matthew Owens uh, was flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct during the game in what was possibly a game-changing touchdown run. Owens held his left hand in the air and pumped his fist a little bit, celebrating the touchdown while he was 25 yards away from the end zone with six minutes left in the game. The touchdown was negated, and a visibly upset Owens threw an interception on the next play. Blue Hills went on to win the game 16-14. Bob, looking at the rules, uh, because Massachusetts follows the NCAA uh, football rules, what there doesn't seem to be any uh, uh, clear-cut violation of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Why was there a flag thrown on this play? I think because there was a clear-cut violation of the rule. You're not supposed to stick your hand up. You're not supposed to celebrate. You're not supposed to do anything like that. The officials are not told to interpret the rules. They're told to enforce the rules, and the rules say you can't do that. Plus, there's a zero-tolerance rule that every single coach knows, and they've been emphasizing this from day one this season. Okay. You know, this zero tolerance you've been talking about, it's, it seems to be more geared at taunting than it is geared at celebrating. Now, there, I mean, there are specific examples that people have put out there, particularly on Boston.com, that what happens after all these times these players celebrate touchdowns and they do the chest bumps and, and, and sort of those things. Like, why aren't there penalties after that for unsportsmanlike conduct? Yeah, there's a lot of inconsistencies. If you see a running back go into the end zone, even if the running back is not celebrating, you always see the linemen behind them, you know, going like that. Same thing, the difference is the linemen don't have the ball. Um, but, it, you know, the past year, they have really, really tried to lock down on sportsmanship. Uh, it, there's been a trickle-down effect from the NFL to college, and they're trying to stop it in the high schools. Okay, well, it's a, it seems unfortunate that it occurred at this level and in such a, a big game, and, and I think everybody can agree to that much. The official who threw it is officially the Grinch of the season, but I think he was right to throw it. All right. Well, looking at our uh, Division I Super Bowl, BC High beat Needham 21-7 for their second title in four years. Uh, BC High running back Deontay Ramey Doe ran for 200 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, and on top of that, it was his 18th birthday, so he said it was a great gift for him. Um, BCI season obviously was inspired in part by the injury of running back Preston Cooper, who uh, broke his ankle in three places October 22nd against Everett. So we caught up with both uh, Deontay Ramey Doe and Preston Cooper following BCI's win and asked them a little bit about the year. I mean, it's great, you know. Words can't describe how I feel right now, all the team. You know, I mean, we fight, we fought all year long, and uh, everybody doubted us to win the Super Bowl this year. And you know what? We put, went out and proved everybody wrong, so I'm proud of everybody. Well, I mean, it's meant a lot. I mean, we, we needed someone to step up after Preston went down. I mean, Preston's one of my best friends. So, I mean, it was nothing coming in. I knew, I knew, I had, I knew what I had to do, and I had to just trust the linemen. Okay, this yeah, once again, you have to say the, uh, the evil all-star teams that the Catholic school teams are came out on top. Uh, BC High's had a very, very good year, struggled against all teams from New Jersey, but played very, very well when it mattered, and as we saw, overcome, overcame the injury to Preston Cooper. Yeah, it was a great year for the Eagles. Um, looking ahead, uh, not at Gillette this year was Everett, the Crimson Tide. They finished the year 13-0 after a 36-13 win over Lincoln Sudbury, uh, in the Division 1A Super Bowl at Bentley University. Now, this being the last year for Jonathan DiBiaso and Vongdell Langston, uh, Bob, I, I guess I should ask then, what can we expect next out of Everett uh, the following year? I mean, yeah. I guess the obvious answer is a new quarterback. And uh, <laughs> you know, if I'm dad, I might retire too, go out on top. Uh, they have a lot of really strong linemen coming back. They have a lot of really good, uh, strong defensive backs and wide receivers. So there's a lot of talent there, as always. But yeah, they have a huge hole at quarterback. That's understandable. One of the standout performances from Super Saturday was Mashpee backup running back Jared Taylor running for 306 yards and two, and excuse me, three touchdowns. He ran for more than 200 yards in the third quarter. Um, Bob, just off the top of your head, 
where does this rank in Super Bowl history since 1972? I mean, yeah. where, where would you put this? It's pretty awesome, but the amazing thing is that even on the Saturday itself, it was still second best because Melaquan Pinckney from Putnam ran for, I think, 341 yards. Great performance by Jared Taylor, but still he was uh, beaten out for honors on that one day. And historically, um, Super Bowls have always produced great results. Cedric Washington, I think, ran for 355 yards back in the 90s. Uh, I think it was about nine years ago that Kyle Beatrice at Swampscott threw five touchdown passes in a game. Some kids just rise to the uh, top in the big games. All right, it was truly a phenomenal performance. Well, that should do it for us. Uh, for all these stories and more, of course, you can read about all of the Super Bowls on boston.com slash schools. For past episodes of The Huddle, go to boston.com slash huddle. And uh, we'll catch you up again on Sunday for a special episode on our football players that have been selected as Globe All Scholastics. So pick up the paper on Sunday and check us out on boston.com. Again, I'm Zuri. He's Bob. We'll catch you next time.